Okay, in, in this particular episode of The Daily Connection, had an opportunity to sit down with Carme Alexander. Carme Alexander is a local artist in Columbus, Georgia, and it's absolutely amazing to sit and listen to her talk about basically a transformation. Life threw her some challenges, life threw her some curveballs. She didn't quit, she didn't give up, and she has been able to sustain herself uh, with her art. You, you're absolutely gonna be blown away at least I was blown away by this interview and I hope that you're able to gain some inspiration from it because it definitely, after discussing with her and talking to her and learning from her, it definitely was able to provide me with inspiration uh, and I'm hoping that it does the same for you. Stay tuned. Hello, Greg Wilson with Connection Small Business Journal. You can always find us online at www.connectmybusiness.me. If you are not following us on social media, I encourage you to do so. Simply type in the at symbol connect my biz. Again, that's the at symbol connect my biz, B-I-Z-Z. -Z. And today we're conducting an interview with a local artist right here in the beautiful city of Columbus, Georgia, Ms. Carme Alexander. Carme, how are you doing today? Doing well. You're doing well. So, Carme, you know, I, I'm doing it, this interview because what people fail to realize that even though you are a local artist, there is a business aspect, a business component to art. Yes. And so what I would like to do today is just have a conversation about that. You know, how, how did you start painting? How did you get into that? I've um, been painting since I've been a, a child. I, I think that, you know, my grandmother, she was an English teacher. Okay. So when the family found out that I was able to draw, you know, um, they, she would keep, you know, crayons and paper and pencils at the house all the right. time in the kitchen. You know, I, I grew up painting and coloring on the kitchen counter in my grandmother's house because she was an English teacher. So she always had supplies ready. Mm -hmm. And I think that what happened was that my family kept feeding me right. and pushing me to, you know, to continue to draw and paint because that was something I just liked doing. Right. Even though, you know, growing up in New York, it was a lot of stuff going on, but my getaway was if, if things got too rough, I would go somewhere and, and draw. And draw and paint, so, wow, wow. Yeah. And so you've been able to sustain that for, uh, for, for years? Yeah, in the, in the back burner, you know, I, when I graduated high school, I just went to the Army and just okay. dropped it. But then I would, you know, draw little pictures in the Army and stuff. And so then after the Army, I went to college and church drama school but i dropped you know everybody they drop art after a while you know everybody drew when they were children mm -hmm. you know and, and and according is whether or not what type of household you grew up in right. if they pushed it or not pushed it you know that depends on where you're going to head and, and just what happened in my family pushed it but not enough for me to go to college for art okay you know so i went and just went to the military just forgot about it right you know? got married and started painting again started drawing and painting back in 2000 no, I think it was 1998. 1997, 1998, 98 is when I started painting. And then just kept on doing it from there, right. you know, and then until finally going full time in 2015. Okay, full time in 2015. Mm -hmm. All right, so prior to 2015, maybe you were working like a corporate job? Yes, I was working a corporate job and, um, this, the, uh, in business, you know, I went to school for business. So okay. And thinking back, I should have went to school for art, but you know, at that time, you know, back in the 90s, you tell somebody you're going to school for art, they're like, Right, you get the you know, science so, of the Right, so I went to for computer science and got my little associates and that, and all, you know, went for my business at Troy State and right. ended up working in corporate and then. Mm -mm. All right, so, so, you're, so you're, shaking, you're shaking your head. <laughs> <laughs> you're shaking your head. And so, what I, what I would like to know if, if, it's, if it's okay, because a lot of us, we go through that journey, mm -hmm. you know, we do what's uh, expected, if you will, of us. You know, we are expected to go to college, we're expected to, you know, go to school for a number of years and you get out, you, you graduate and you go work for a company. Whether you're happy or not, that's the expectation. Right. Now, I've gone through that, I've been through that. Talk to me about that journey, you know, uh, and we're gonna get into, we're gonna get back into the art because, but I, I like to hear 
And I'm glad to see that I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm glad to see, you know what? Like, dude, you know, you, you, you were not happy that self-employment, the, the entrepreneur spirit was alive in me. Mm -hmm. And obviously it was alive in you. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. Well, um, let's see, 2014. 2014, that's, that's when I, I was up to here with corporate. I was, mm -hmm. uh, I was on medication. I was on anti-anxiety medication. Wow. I was on a, a antidepressant medication. Wow. I was, you know, and, and, and <clears throat> life <clears throat> happens, you know. Right, it does. But at, sometimes when you don't know how to handle that, it, 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 it almost feels like that life is just taking you all over the place and you don't understand what's going on. You exactly. think it's just, you know, but it is really not about that. It's just that you just don't have the tools to handle those things. And, and at that time, I didn't know that what it was. I was miserable at that place. I was right. miserable working, you know. For them, and um, because it, in my mind they were, we were expendable, and I don't, I'm not expendable. Exactly. You know, so and, and so I, I knew my worth at that time, but whenever I would mention it to people, right. you know, hey, I'm thinking about, you know, doing maybe selling selling art and mm -hmm. making my jewelry full time. Oh no, 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 right. no. That when you have a family, to take care of, you know. And and I think that you know after, <clears throat> by, by 2014, I just knew I said, okay, I need to leave. Right. I need to leave and, and pursue what I know that I can do full time. And I know, you know, with with greatness comes hardships, you know. Exactly. And, and you, 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 you can't grow without the failures and everything right. of learning. That's right. how you acquire growth and knowledge and wisdom and stuff right. like that. So I knew, I, I kind of pretty much had an idea of what was going to happen, you know, losing out on a whole bunch of money, mm -hmm. you know, losing out on my material possessions, right. cars, places to live, right. and, and even being homeless, you know. I, I, I was homeless in 2016. 2016, I, I didn't have anywhere to live. My mother wow. died, my father died in 2016. So, wow. it, 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 but even still, right. I was painting. Right. I was painting. I was painting without. A, I was painting out in the streets. I was painting, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and nobody knows this because on Facebook, you guys, everybody was looking at it like, oh, she is, she is dropping them, dropping them, dropping right. them. She yeah. They and they don't know the story, and, <laughs> and that's one of the things about social media. <laughs> you know, people see entrepreneurs, they see small business owners. You know, they see what we post, mm -hmm. but, but they definitely do not have uh, any knowledge whatsoever of just the grind, the everyday grind that we go through each and every day mm -hmm. in the pursuit, if you will, of our dreams, in the pursuit of our aspirations. So that's, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. that you are in that place, still producing content, mm -hmm. you know, and that you are still painting in, in, the midst, in the midst of all of that struggle. It's like that internal burning inside of you and, and when you've given up everything in your life for one thing right. you stay focused on that because that's the one thing you you know that's what's going to keep you and get you out of the situation that you know exactly you, you have to stay on course if you have a dream a desire or whatever that you know that you're passionate about you have drop everything for it right. you have to well, fulfill your life exactly because it's short <laughs> And we're here to experience all different type of things. Mm -hmm. we're, we're spirits and, you know, in human skin body, you know. So we're supposed to be here to experience a lot of different things. And, right. and that one was leaving corporate and going full time as an artist. Wow. So that's, and you've, even in that narrative that you just gave, when you're giving advice, I want to put a peg in that. And we, I want to come back to the advice uh, part, part of it. So let's talk about the art and business, mm -hmm. you know, because it's one thing to put, you know, to, you know, grab some oil and some canvases and, and, you know, get into that place. But even how do you get into that place? You know, how were you able to, in the midst of all the hardship, in the midst of that pain, in the midst of being homeless and all these different things, how were you able to, if I could say mentally, because you had to have mental fortitude. Right, so right. How were you able exactly. to, was it meditation or? or it, was, it, was, it was meditation because you know, by the time I left corporate, I was on like seven different medications, antidepressants wow. and anti-anxiety, sleeping pills. Um, I was drinking, you know, I was a heavy, heavy, heavy smoker. And nothing, I'm not saying anything wrong with all the, at, at all, right. to each his own. But too much of anything is bad. You know, right. so you're mixing alcohol medication and cigarettes and, you know, so you just, you're doing all this to cover up for being miserable at your job. And you come home and bring it out in your family. So what happened was that... Once I got into, and at that, at that particular time, I couldn't, I was painting, mm -hmm. but they weren't detailed. It right. didn't have that, that oomph, you know, right. I used to have that oomph, you know, before I became this, uh, you know, but. The paintings behind me, yeah. behind us, <laughs> have that oomph. Yeah, right. I used to have that back in 2006 or something like that. Right. It was 2006 when I started all the medication, you know, they, 
they deemed me, you know, bipolar and, you know, stress disorder and, you know, all this, all this craziness. But what happened was I started meditating, and mm -hmm. once I started, med I was introduced to it because I was just curious about it. And my friend, oh, I'll teach you. I thought, yes, yes. I want to learn how to steal my mind, and I'm trying to get something that I lost, you know, mm -hmm. through the medication because the medication almost it, it puts a cloud over your head. Right. It's almost like it, it 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 kills, you know, the creativity inside right. you. Right. So when he showed me this med meditation, he showed me maybe three different types of breathing techniques, and the, the thing is just the breathing. So mm -hmm. once he showed me those three, I went and just went to reading and wow. you know finding out more about it what right. it does for your body and how it and and, and I, I stayed with it since 2015 mm -hmm. um 14 or 15 but I was gonna say for, I stay with meditation mm -hmm. and I got off of medication mm -hmm. that's, that's and good. I told my psychiatrist I wasn't going to come back either All right you know <laughs> and they didn't even you know they didn't it you know they by all means, Ms. Alexander, go ahead. You know, because they know. You know, you sit there talking to the psychiatrist, and you tell the psychiatrist you're doing yoga and you're meditating. He's probably thinking to himself, "You're not gonna need me in a couple of weeks. You're gonna be gone." And so <laughs> he knew when I said that when I started coming in and telling him I'm meditating and doing yoga and stuff like that. He exactly. just he knew I was on my way out the door. Right. So when it was time for me to come in and tell him I'm, not, I'm no longer taking the medication, right. he was just like they were like whatever they healed or whatever you know. And um, I just stayed on course with it. But see. Sometimes when people don't know things for sure about, you know, just certain information about things, because I was, people were trying to stop me from, um, so certain friends were trying to stop me from meditating. You know, they, oh, that's bad. That's, you know, that's, that's not good. Right. You know, you shouldn't do that. And that made me even go in harder. Right. That made me go well, in harder. I think that maybe it's a lack of understanding, maybe even mm -hmm. on their part. Mm -hmm. It is. What we it don't was. understand. And we, I still love them to death, you know. Right. 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 You know, a lot of people do that. If they, if they don't know. Or, they're fearful of it because they don't know. Exactly. And so they try to stop you based on their perception. Right. Mm -mm. Right. Mm -mm. So that's how you were able to to sustain yourself and, and maintain that mental fortitude and being healed as a re, as a direct result of meditation. Right. Cause sh and sitting and just shutting your mind down. Right. You know, and it, it's it's nothing. You it's it's not like the way they portray. It's the way it is on TV, on TV and the videos and everything. Because there's a correct posture you have to sit. You have to have us. But starting off, you can be sitting in a chair mm -hmm. with your hands on your lap, close your eyes, and just shut everything off. Now, of course, our brains, our brains are, we have like monkey brains anyway, so you know, we're always, the chatter, right? but you can tell the chatter to stop, Right. you know, and it'll stop. And then after a while, just get tired, like, man, you, you really for real about this, you know, either that, you're going to fall asleep, exactly. you know. And then on top of that, electronic, you know, electronic devices. Mm -hmm. Turn them off. Turn them off. Right. Turn them off, because... That's interfering with you becoming, you know, one with yourself right. and just shutting down and just letting your mind in your body just get rest. Exactly. Because with rest, that's when the ideas come. As soon as it shuts down for two, three, four, five minutes, you, you whenever you're coming back to just, you know, getting up and doing your normal routines, right. you have ideas coming. Exactly. Right. Yeah, and that's what that's what happens. All right. So uh, so again, you made it through that particular point. You went all in with painting. The paintings begin to have that mm back, right? <laughs> so let's talk about, let's, let's talk a little bit about Carme, about how people ne maybe not necessarily realize the business aspect behind art. Right. See, it's one thing to produce this great content, mm -hmm. but it's something else to sustain yourself, you know, from an economic standpoint mm. uh, in, mm -hmm. in, in doing that. So let's talk about the business aspect of art. How are, how are you uh, able uh, to do that, I'm um, I'm able to do that because I simply just gave up material possession. Mm -hmm. exactly. I live meagerly. Right. You know, I I eat the foods that I have to eat. I don't. You know, I, I eat to live. I don't eat live to eat. You know. So, you know, I, it, the clothes that I wear is I make myself. You mm -hmm. know. So, and, and I, now I have no hair. So that's <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of money on that, you know, and uh, because the, the, you know they have the term the starving, starving artist. Well, there's a reason why I'm starving. Just like a writer or, or a musician or right. a rapper, you know, everybody's you know. But you still have to produce the music. You still have to write that music. Exactly. You still exactly. have to you know do those lyrics. You still got to do it, no matter if you're living on the streets or not. So the and the business side of it is just it's hard. Right. And it's hard economically, but you can live off your drive. Right. You can live off your passion. Well, let me ask you: Are you able to? You're able to paint, 
sell the paintings, uh, you maybe get your art into galleries and that sort of thing? Yeah, well, just like you said, it's, it's one thing to create and then another thing to sell. You know, right. So now a lot of us artists are having this issue. <clears throat> we're putting all of our energy into our work, you know, where we, we don't hang out a lot, you know. Uh, we don't do a lot of things. If you see me out and about, I try to, I try to purposely get out once a week, every mm -hmm. Thursday, you know, because I have to. Because if not, I'll be in the house all day painting. Right. So, you know, what am I what is, what is I'm talking about? Painting and then getting out the house. Right. What's I saying? So do you do you do any uh, like networking? Oh yes, that's what I was gonna say. By the time you get finished, finish your your masterpiece, you. You're drained, you're tired, and, 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 and the business side is not really taught. The right. business side of, you know, art, right. it's like a, it seems like, to me, it seems like it's like a secret. You have to be a part of a group, you have to right. be a part of a guild somewhere, you have to have the uh, formal education, you know, if you don't have the formal education in art, then you don't have no connections to the art world, right. and you know, and so that means if you, then you have to have sponsors because you have to have somebody buy your supplies, exactly. or you're buying your own supplies, and that takes away from the cre creativity, because you're too busy worried about, you know, having to get supplies for the stuff that you need because you have no one to sponsor you. Right. That side isn't told. It's almost like, um, I don't know, maybe it's some sort of secret. There needs, to be a, there needs to be a platform for artists that once we, get, once we create, then there should be like another way for us to be able to get it out because we don't have the time. Right. We're too busy creating. I can sit and, and make things all day and just come up with some very nice stuff. Right. If I if I if I can just find another department for to, you know to sell them to sell the art, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I think that even something that you mentioned, you know, a lot of even business owners, even entrepreneurs that have been in business for X amount of years, even I think that to a certain degree, we all struggle with that with that aspect. It's one thing to pr produce, but something else to or something another thing completely. To even ask for the sale, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, or put or place yourself in position. One thing that you are doing that I would encourage you to continue to do, and that is to get out and network. I truly believe in networking. I believe that you know the more people that begin to know you, begin to know your brand, mm -hmm. you know, the, at that point people begin to expect certain things from you. You know, where we, we can begin to even in a greater form of fashion expect more art that has that mm to it, <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? So, uh, so I, would encourage, I would encourage you to do, uh, to do that. So I told you to put a pen in the advice that you would give to other artists, mm -hmm. whether these are artists in middle school, well, I can go back earlier than that, elementary school, mm -hmm. uh, elementary mm -hmm. school, middle school, high school, and maybe someone that wants to pursue art full time. In the world that we live in now, with social media being what it is, and you know the internet being what it is, what advice would you give to an up-and-coming artist? To find a mentor. Wow. Yeah. You have you have to find a mentor, and the mentor. I think she she came to me, <laughs> Jill. She came to me, but she she's she's been an artist for you know for like 50 years, so I don't know how long, but she's a formal formally educated in the arts, so. A lot of things that I'm doing is coming naturally to me, mm -hmm. with with me not even knowing or understanding what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It just come. It just I'm just, I'm just creative that way. All right. But it's a gift. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It yeah, is. It's a gift. But she's telling me what I'm doing from what the school is, has taught them. Right. You know, she so she got hers from school, and I mine's just come from up. You know. That's a gift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's good to have a mentor. Though. You right. have to have a mentor. Right. Have to. Have to. A lot of, but there's not a lot of art mentors out there. Right. You know, there's kids in school that's drawing, the teachers tell them to go be something else. Exactly. You want to draw, doctor, you want right. to, yeah, you want, mm -mm, my children, <laughs> at one time they were being pushed to try to be doctors and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, 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 no. My daughter's a writer. And my son is very, very, very good at video games. He wants to be able to, you know, make software programs. Exactly. Okay. That's their drive. Right. So drive that and can make them continue that Very drive. Good. Good. Don't steer them off to something you believe that they should be. Well, that's what you believe. That's not what they want. Right. We have to go with that. And a lot of children are getting sidetracked because of that. And, exactly. and there's not a lot of art mentors out there. I was I lucked out. You know, Keith lucked out, whatever. But a lot of children are just sitting like how I was at the house, like you know. But I had a family. My family supported me. But a lot of children don't have that. 
Okay. To me, that's the most important. All right. Yeah. Well, folks, this has been an interview with Carme, Carme Alexander, a phenomenal artist. You see some of her art here. We're going to be posting pictures uh, of the artwork here on our, on our website and on social media. So, Carme, how do we get in contact with you? Well, I'm, I'm on um, Facebook, uh, Carme Alexander. Okay. Carme Alexander on Facebook. Basically, Ivory is my business page. Um, Instagram is Carme at, Car at Carme Art. And I think those are the three. And then my email, of course, is basically Ivory at gmail.com. Okay. I think I have some pictures on the um, Black Box website, um, the Black Box Art Gallery website. Um, website is www.blackboxartgallery.com. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but once, well, if you go out to those sources, then you will see all kinds of you know pieces of art that I've been doing throughout the year. And actually, if you go through my Facebook for the past five or six years, you will see my growth. Wow. And understand, you know, the, how meditation played a part of it. You know, so right now, basically, I'm I'm just now getting into the business side of it because I'm I've been doing the creative side. Right. So now it's time for me to. Get to the business hopper, side of things. Hopper down on the business side. Mm -hmm. Get that mm in the business side <laughs> that your art has. Yes. All right. Well, Carmen, it's actually, I mean, it's been an absolute pleasure. I really appreciate I appreciate this opportunity to sit down with you and uh, just hear the journey. You know, I'm big about the story, and it's just absolutely amazing to me to hear and see uh, the transformation that has taken place uh, in your life. So this again, folks, this has been Carme Alexander. Until next time, this has been Greg Wilson with Connection Small Business Journal. As I mentioned earlier, you can always find us online, www.connectmybusiness.me. Follow us on social media. Connect with Carme. If you're not connected with her, <laughs> connect with her as soon as you get done watching this video. Carme Alexander, again, it's been a pleasure. All right, bye. Bye.